yeah. Um, his, his introductions are so inspiring, and after Ethan's performance, I'm worn out. Could be from walking up the stairs. Anyway, um, I have gotten some requests for some poetry for the last two weeks, and one of them was to write a poem about Doctor Who. You got any Doctor Who fans out there? Yeah! Cool. Okay. So, I did write a poem about Doctor Who, and I had this issue with costuming and wanting to costume. So I thought, you know what? Tweed coat, bow tie, because bow ties are cool. Yes, they are. And I got the ensemble together. I put on a pair of slacks, tweed coat, the bow tie. And I looked at myself in the mirror, and I went, I look like I live in a van down by the river. <laughs> so... It was, a, it was a fail, and so I took all of that off, and I started thinking. I was watching this movie, uh, Confessions of a Dangerous Mind, and it is about uh, Chuck Barris, and it's a great movie, but Chuck Barris was a creator of a thing called The Gong Show a long, long time ago. They had a guy came out who did comedy, and he was called The Unknown Comic, and he wore a paper bag on his head with you know, some eye holes cut out. So I started thinking, you know, unknown comic, unknown poet, you know, I could be like, you know, that could be my costume. So I started looking around for a paper bag and I didn't have any. All I had was a plastic bag. <laughs> so, so I got this plastic bag and I put it on my head and I was like tearing eye holes in it. And you know what? Those things will freaking bust in a second if you're carrying something. But if you're trying to tear specific eye holes in them, I put this thing on my head and I was thinking if I had a chainsaw, no. If I had like gloves with hypodermics, no, that wasn't going to work. I felt like Jonah Hill in Django Unchained. I was like, you know, can I get another sack? It was so horrible because I just couldn't get them right. And so I had this sack on my head and I'm like twisting it around trying to like tear the eye holes in the right position because I wear these glasses, right? And it's really tough. And so I kind of thought, well, wait a minute now, I can sort of see through this sack. And so I'm like, okay, let's see how this would work. I put the sack on my head and I kind of like pulled it up against my glasses. And I'm like, okay, this might work because I can sort of kind of see myself in the mirror. I was very blurry and faint, but it, the lights wouldn't matter, you know? So I start my recitation, because so I'm practicing. You know, there are people that strangle themselves while they masturbate. Whoa. 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That I, the only reason, the only reason, the only reason, sorry, okay. I apologize. The only reason that came to my mind was because it's what I heard these two paramedic guys talking about when I woke up in the back of the ambulance. And I was like, thinking to myself, <laughs> seriously, I was thinking to myself, on the one hand, it's like, wow, I should not have tied that sack. And then I was thinking, God, what sick things for these guys to be talking about. I mean, you know, when you're a paramedic, you probably see a lot of the seedier side of life or whatever, you know. And I'm thinking, you know, wow, these guys, this is what they talk about in their off time or whatever. But I'm thinking, no, I'm getting pissed because it's like, this is not their off time. You've got this uncomfortable, freezing cold guy in his underwear with a plastic sack tied around his neck. It's like, I know, right? It's like, pay attention to me. You know? So, okay, okay, so, anyway, okay, so after all of this failure with the costume thing, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do the Doctor Who poem, and y'all can just listen to it and imagine that I, like, sort of kind of look like Doctor Who, whatever. Okay, can I put this down? I mean, this is really distracting. Anyway, okay. Anyway, um, okay, the song, uh, the poem, sorry, is called No Time Wasted. Not long ago, when I sought games to play, a friend I knew suggested that I try to watch a man who hailed from Gallifrey. I knew not who, but did not question why. The telly gave me all its very best. The BBC had surely aired a gem. The doctor traveled always with a guest. They helped him out, and he looked after them. The episodes were often very strange. 
the stage they played in any time or place, the universe and history, the range, and dangers that together they would face. Dr. Standards were of the highest sort. He knew the cosmos as he knew his hand. No vile act of villainy would he not thwart. Things always seemed to turn out as he planned. But the stories were not simply random fun. The message ran straight through it, true and deep. So faint at first, yet rapidly unspun, the best of all humanity to keep. He always came to love those by his side, and they in turn to love him as well. And though the reach of space was far and wide, the doctor always came to earth to dwell. And as he danced about from whence to where, occasionally he sacrificed himself alone. And when he passed into the cosmos care, another doctor in his place was sown. I will admit that with each passing face, at first I wished the coaster ride would cease. Each doctor that I felt they could not replace gave way to one I would sooner not release. I know the show is one of stories told. The fiction reigns and science is suspect. But as the heart and soul of it unfolds, it's grown to have my absolute respect. So if you have some time you find is free, the simple thing I'd ask for you to do, grab your remote and turn on your TV and watch the doctor known as Doctor Who. Thank you.